Welcome back to the Video CPA. I'm Michael Scott. I'm your host for this program. CPA of about uh, over 46 years now, and uh, I've just completed uh, another tax season, so it's good to be back with you. Uh, last week we talked about the cash basis of accounting. Today we're going to talk about the accrual basis of accounting, which is a little bit different. Um, we're going over these very, uh, very basically, but uh, it does give you an idea of what uh, uh, what each one is, on a, uh, and uh, what uh, the difference in the basis is on each one of these. And um, you need to understand there are other uh, bases of accounting, uh, but most of them are based on one of these two. They're just modifications of one of these two. So these are the only two that we're going to go over, but. Uh, Thank you for being here. Um, I want to talk about uh, what is the accrual basis of accounting, uh, who can use it, and the benefits of the accrual basis of accounting. And uh, I may mention a few of the drawbacks of the accrual basis as well. But uh, uh, here's our disclaimer uh, for um, affiliate links. And uh, here's our educational disclaimer. You see these every time. All right, so what is the accrual basis of accounting? We talked about the cash basis of accounting and when you receive cash and the cash basis, that uh, is when you recognize the revenue. So the cash basis, you receive the cash, you pay out the cash, you're gonna recognize revenue. The accrual basis is much different, okay? Because you recognize revenue or expense when you have a legal liability to either receive that or to pay that expense, all right? So if you've sold something on accounts uh, on an account basis, an accounts receivable type basis, you recognize that as revenue at that time. All right. Even though you haven't received the cash, you recognize that as revenue at that time. And if you've got a uh, if you've purchased something and you haven't paid for it yet, but you have a legal liability to pay for it, you enter an accounts payable on the books, and you have uh, recognized that expense at that time. So quite a bit different. I mean, it's quite a bit different philosophy than what the cash basis is. Uh, the accrual basis is the preferred method. It's uh, accepted by, by GAAP, which is generally accounting and accepted accounting principles. And um, so it's thought, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes more, but it's thought to give you a more complete picture of a company's uh, financial position, okay? Um, so just remember, cash basis, you have to receive the cash. Uh, accrual basis, you have a legal liability. Just as soon as you have the legal liability, you record the revenue. And uh, so let's go ahead. Now, who gets to use the accrual basis? I talked uh, last week about the cash basis. We'll talk about that a little bit here. Uh, most small businesses are going to use the cash basis, and I recommend that they do, okay? Um, and we talked about when you adopt uh, your accounting method. And that's when that first tax return is filed. And once that's filed, uh, you're going to have to get consent from the IRS to uh, uh, go to a different accounting method. So you need to make sure that you make that decision uh, right. Now, if you, if you do file on the accrual method and you want to change later, you can change, like I say, but you've got to file a, file a form, an accounting change form, and get the IRS to approve it. And uh, uh, if you're a small taxpayer, they'll probably do that. It just may take a long time. So, uh, uh, and we mentioned last year, that last week, that uh, if you've got uh, three years average of over $26 million, uh, $26 million or less, uh, you can file, you can use the cash method. But anybody above that is going to have to use the uh, accrual method. So what you see is that uh, because of that gross receipt requirement, most large companies, all large companies basically, are using the accrual method of accounting. And uh, although we don't see it a lot in small business, well, we do see quite a bit of it when we're doing corporations uh, and uh, uh, that type of thing. But um, other than that, you don't see the accrual method used if you're a CPA working with uh, small businesses. But um, 
Uh, large business certainly uses it. And if you've worked in a, uh, a big corporation, uh, they're going to be uh, accruing expenses and uh, certainly having accounts payable on the books and accruing revenue. All right, let's look at where you make that decision again. Uh, you'll see up here I didn't change the benefits of the cash basis. It's actually, uh, we're talking about the accrual basis, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, you'll see um, on line F there, under accounting method, you can choose cash, or you can choose accrual, or you can choose other. And if you're a small business, I tell you you need to use cash. If you're a big business, you may be required to use the accrual method. Um, and there's nothing wrong with the accrual method. It's just a little bit more complex than the cash method and uh, you need to know a little bit more about uh, accounting in order to uh, use it. Uh, like I said, companies using GAAP reporting, generally accepted accounting principles, uh, must use the accrual method uh, for their financial reporting. Uh, the accrual method um, better matches expenses to the revenues and um, and that's important in accounting. The matching principle is important in accounting because you want to match the revenue with the expenses that uh, help produce that revenue and uh, within, a given, within a period. And the accrual method does a lot better job than the cash method of doing that. So that's one of the main advantages of the accrual method and that's why they want big corporations to use it. It also provides a clear picture of the financial position of an entity. And when we talk about the financial position of an entity, we're basically talking about the balance sheet. Okay, so under the cash method, you may not have receivables on your balance sheet or payables for that matter, but those things are out there. Those are liabilities of the company and people need to know about that. If you're a banker, for example, you may want to know about that. So um, what this company has before you loan to them. Uh, the accrual method shows all those things. I mean, it shows the accounts receivable, it shows the accounts payable, it shows notes payable, those type of things. And so the accrual method uh, does give a much more complete position uh, of the uh, financial position of an entity. All right, And that's why, um, like I say, big corporations are required to use the uh, accrual method. With that being said, if you're a small company, I still advise that you use the cash method until you grow to be very big and they require you to use the accrual method. All right, well, that's the main difference between those two methods. That's uh, pretty basic, but that is the main difference. So uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, next week we'll have another tax subject and uh, uh, stay tuned. Uh, if you like the video, uh, uh, give me a thumbs up, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.